hello greetings and welcome now as we go through the hermetic process and we're working up and down the vibrational scale inside time and space releasing time releasing space working with akasha akasha door is accumulated by the stillness under every exercise you concentrate an object everything becomes still you gather and accumulate the stillness you make a library of stillness that library of stillness is your door to akasha through akasha you look at the mind, you look at the fabric of light of the mind, and you get to know thyself. The law of resonance allows this to happen. Now within each exercise in the Hermetic Framework, you lay each exercise out. I like to lay it out to 72 exercises. And uh, once you have these 72 exercises in place, like there'll be some exercises which you'll have variations to and add more, and you'll have other exercises that uh, am I going to make a wax doll of myself? And, and you may not do that one. Um, but you may add an exercise like, okay, I'll get a crystal ball, I'll drill a hole in it, I'll put some blood and seal it with beeswax, and then I'll charge that ball with energy so that I can go directly into my blood and change my DNA and activate certain things and deactivate other things. You may decide, I'll add that in. So there'll be, it's flexible based on your path. You'll pay more attention to things that are, that are in resonance with your life service. If you're a teacher, you'll be doing more insight work. If you're a healer, you'll be, you'll, you'll be doing more, more qualitative alchemical transformation work. If you're um, a bricklayer, you're going to be looking at how do you charge every one of these bricks with love to build a person's dream home so they have a happy life when they walk through the door, so they just feel warmth and feel wonderful and go, this is my home. So you, you have a different skill set which comes out of the initiation process based on your life's purpose. So you design your 72 exercises and you go, okay, these are the ones I'm going to work on. And you can, you can expand it out to 108 if there's more unique things you want to develop. But the first run should be as small as possible. Um, the way I teach initiation, and even the way I wrote my book on initiation and the commentary and the exercises, isn't actually the way I teach it. I don't do all the sense gates simultaneously, I do one sense gate. And it's the easiest one to open, and this is why I can get results in people so quickly. You feel life force, the feeling gate. You release time within the feeling, you're in the astral body. You release release space within the feeling you're in the mental body and then you move into the akasha breathing timelessness and spacelessness in and out and you enter akasha you amplify that further by accumulating stillness under all the different exercises and you feel the stillness and you gather it you balance each of the elements and you move into the soul plexus and collapse your mind inwards you feel that and you fall into the akasha all these different tools that you're using are feeling. You feel, 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 and you track the feelings. And you identify with what you feel to exert your will through it to refine and develop it, transform it. So this way people, they may not be clairvoyant, they might, may not hear spirits, they may not be able to mental wander in realms, but they will feel those realms, they will feel the frequencies. This way people move all the way up into these non-dual light realms very quickly and develop very high frequencies because they can pay attention to their feelings. Once they're in this light realm, they invoke clairvoyance, clairaudience and other skills down and create the mental, astral, physical space and, and mechanisms for those skills to awaken. And each skill within the initiation process, each exercise, you invoke mastery from the light as an essence and then you express that essence through the mental astral physical body. So first, I teach Qigong to people, three transformations, how to move up into light, how to feel. Then I teach them initiation process from that light. This generates a totally different pathway, a different mechanism of speed and efficiency of getting somewhere. So how do you know if that's gonna work for you? Well, are you sensitive? Do you feel? I've had people come and train with me who feel energy so acutely that they get exercises like Fajin and Empty Force in a few minutes. They just go, oh yeah, I can feel that. Done. 
and they know what to train. And I've had people who have come and trained with me year after year uh, for several years and they can't feel energy and they've just not gotten it. You know, it's, it's like, I can't make you feel. Um, when they're in class, they feel. They step out of the class, every, all the doors close and they, they don't feel. So they have to keep coming back, which isn't a positive thing because they're not owning their skills. They're having to ride the energy of the group to have the experience. This is not good. So everybody has a different sense of um, sensitivity. The more sensitive you are, the easier it is to move through the feeling gate and get results. If a person is very, very academically minded, I include a lot of contemplation types of exercises. If they're very uh, visually minded, we do a lot of um, uh, creative visualization work. If a person's very auditory uh, in, their, in their consciousness, we do more element orientated work with contemplation uh, to, to get them to get results quicker. So you adapt it to the group. But the primary, get your feeling gate first and everything becomes easy, fast, because you can pay attention to the feeling of each frequency on the vibrational scale much more easily than being able to see and hear and smell and taste. Okay, so vibrational scale is the law of resonance. Let's look at ways of, um, of using the law of resonance. Now let's say um, you have a group of people and uh, you want to bring this group together. Let's use an extreme case, the family unit. Now you sit down at the dinner, dinner table. It's the same time. Everyone has timing. They have resonance of time, resonance of place, resonance of everyone sitting down for a common purpose. They have a resonance of they like the food because they're there and they want to eat that as a group, as a family. It's their favorite food then as they consume the food, the microbiome starts to mash each other. The genetic resonance of the family are matching each other. They share the dreams together of what they want to do in their life. They all pay attention to these dreams. They share their day. They're paying attention to each other's day. There's problem solving together. The neurogenesis of the brain starts to match within each person. and The law of resonance connects them as a family unit. And they may say grace together and pray at a very deep Akashic resonance for the family unit. That's the greatest value of prayer before food in a family that you can have because it synchronizes everyone's etheric body into the stillness, into the sacred before consuming food. Very valuable exercise for building a family. So all these different levels from sharing, into, sharing information intellectually, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all these things resonate together to make the family unit. So there's this unconscious binding that takes place when you have all these resonant tuning forks. Now, if you run a business, you've got to go, how can I get all my, my, my staff into resonance with each other to operate synchronistically? You have to identify the tuning forks of synchronicity. You have to identify the the things that bring them together and harmoniously get people to work and build those tuning forks. If you're in the military, marching. Everyone marching together brings everyone to synchronicity. There's an unconscious resonance of thinking and feeling that takes place when people march. If you're in a martial arts class, everyone's training the same thing. Everyone's lined up, everyone's doing the Tai Chi form in the synchronicity. You get an unconscious resonance. That's why Fajin works so well with a group that are unconsciously synchronized. They're all on the same frequency. So the energies are hitting each other and affecting each other. You get someone who's unsynchronized, not connected to that frequency, the energy passes. It doesn't hit, hit them. The Fajin just doesn't work. Because they're so used to training with people who are in resonance and not having to tune their energy to the resonance of the person they want to affect. Remember, two tuning forks on the same frequency affect each other. One energy comes in, touches the other. So we have this re law of resonance effect happening. Now, if you're engaging a person you're not in resonance with, how can you affect them? You have to tune, mentally transfer to their frequency, enliven it with vital energy, enliven it with astral energy, enliven it with your mental space on their frequency, 
Now you can bounce them in Fajin. Now you can influence the group. Now you can lead a discussion. Now you can teach. You bring everyone into resonance. You may need a bit of time to generate rapport for that resonance to happen, but you need to be in resonance to make it happen. If you wish to affect people, you need resonance. Okay, so this law of resonance is what great speakers use to bring people into resonance. You know, they may say, oh, you know, think of a, a, one of your most wonderful childhood memories. And everyone goes back into their childhood and invokes the memory. They anchor that to their voice, they anchor that to some type of uh, behavior, and then they hit that anchor every time they want to bring the group together and make them feel good. So they're using the law of resonance on an unconscious way. NLP type systems and hypnotic type systems all use these principles of unconscious resonance and triggering that unconscious resonance with physical action, speech, tones, body language and so forth. So this law of resonance is inside of all different types of psychological methods, inside every aspect of initiation, inside all forms of spiritual development. People who understand the law of resonance get success more quickly than people who don't. Someone who's not a part of the team, well, you've got to get rid of them because they're not in resonance with success of the team. So there's law of resonance, you need to break it down. Look at the aspects of your personality. Now I'm putting a small pad of paper in your pocket and I have attachment feeling to this today, I have aversion feeling to that. Write it down. Today I experienced attachment to this, aversion to that. I really like that person I met today, I really dislike someone I saw on the street that just gave me the creeps. And you write these things down. And this is a door to your subconscious resonance. Why do you feel that way? These are the things in your unconscious that steer your thinking, they steer your feeling, they steer your actions. How much freedom of choice do you think you have when your unconscious mind is making you feel the way you do and you're acting like a puppet to those feelings. You're going down a river on a boat and you're not steering it. The river's taking you wherever the river wants to go. So in Hermetics, we go through the process of identifying these tuning forks. And we start with the black and white mirror, just look at the most obvious ones. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, I'm like that. You know, and then you get people to reflect, say, oh, you know, the fire asks my personality, how do you perceive me? The water, the earth, the air. And get them to, to profile you so you can get more introspection into these unconscious tuning forks that are regulating how you think, feel and act. Through the day, you're, you're uncovering more and more by observing your own mental, astral and physical states and documenting it. You get home, you take your pad of paper out. Oh, I've got a release on this attachment. I've got a release on that aversion. I've got a release on this, I've got a release on that and you use an accompanying element that's in resonance, you breathe into it, you bring it up to the surface, you pay attention to it, you transform it or release it. By paying attention to something, it moves from an unconscious state to a conscious state. The iceberg rises to the surface. You start to see it for what it is. It moves from one place to another. And this contemplation method of identifying a part of your personality, you're simply looking at it, makes the nuances of it obvious. And as soon as they become obvious, they become a choice. If you don't see it, you can't choose. If you see the tuning fork, you can choose whether you want it to vibrate or not. So this, this uh, truth gives you freedom. When you understand your own astral nature, you become freed of your own astral nature. This principle of freedom is very, very important in the, in the Hermetic path because it's all about truth and freedom. If you want to be a master of your destiny, you've got to take the steering wheel and choose what direction you go. Not all these behaviorally conditioned unconscious tuning forks that are steering you through life based on making people around you happy. No, it's this is where I want to go. These are the mental states, astral states and physical alignments I need to go in that direction and you become the master of your destiny. The law of resonance gives you the tools to become a master of your destiny. Very, very important. Define the vibrational scale from the beginning 
to the end. Look at the underlying principles as they make sense in your intuition and your intellect. They get a little bit more un, unintellectually digestible after Akasha, but that's okay. You still have a framework of how to train to get into those places, and the intuitive knowing moves deeper and deeper. So to access the knowing, you've got to move into Akasha to know how to train next. Okay, so for this Lords of Resonance, define the vibrational scale, define your astral personality, define the tuning forks in your mental body, what you're transmitting, what you're receiving, define the physical. If you're in a family unit, then define the tuning forks of each person in the family, physically, astrally, mentally. Define the pearls on their crown. What are the highest qualities within each member of your family? What are the highest qualities within each member of your staff and your company? What are the highest qualities of your friends? That is the label of the book. That's how you label them. Oh, he's good at maths. Oh, he's good at this. Oh, he's a great salesman. Ah, oh, what a lovely heart. The person makes me feel warm. Whatever those tuning forks are, put them on their crown. Look above their head and see the pearls labeled. Oh, there's that feeling of love. There's that feeling of leadership. There's those qualities. And identify that person from their highest. Remember them from their highest. Interact and speak to their highest. Hit those tuning forks and make them vibrate so they get stronger, deeper and more profound. That's your obligation to your family, to your friends, to your staff, to people you're interacting with, is to only see the best that they have to offer and make those tuning forks vibrate. The opposite is also true, that if you look at their lowest, it's going to vibrate and they're going to feel bad and withdrawn, their mental space is going to contract and they'll move away from the inner genius. You look at their highest, their mental space goes, ah, my mind is open, my feeling is open, my body is open, I feel powerful, I can achieve and do anything I want to do in life when I'm around this person. How do they make me feel that way? Because what you're paying attention to awakens the genius within the people around you. Pay attention to the highest and best of every person you interact with. Think of them in that light. Feel them in that light. Interact with them in that light. And they'll become that light. Very important part about the law of resonance. And these tuning forks that you're paying attention to and identifying within each person will begin to wake up within yourself. And whatever you want inside your mind, inside your heart, inside your body, pay attention to those things in other people. If you're, if you're a bit emotionally broken and you, you, you can't relate emotionally to people, look at people with an open heart and go, wow, that person got such an open heart. Pay attention to it. Guess what? Your heart will start to open. These fundamental laws of resonance are there everywhere. If you want to be wealthy, hang around wealthy people. The law of resonance will bring your unconscious mind into methods for developing wealth. If you want to be a great artist, hang around great artists. That part of you will come to resonance and start to wake up. If you want to master Tai Chi, hang around Tai Chi masters. You'll get good at Tai Chi. It's obvious. The law of resonance is in there in every aspect of your life. First, recognize it. Second, apply attention to those tuning forks to amplify the mental, astral, physical resonance of what you want in your life. Okay, thank you for your time. And uh, see you on the next video.